This is chapter 4 of uh, Dr. Rajiv Mal's book on software engineering. And uh, the chapter is named as Requirements, Analysis and Specification. So let us try and uh, find hints of the question being asked in the end of the uh, questions, uh, you know, of the topic. So let us start. First is, suppose you have been appointed as the analyst, so requirement analyst, for a large software development project and discuss the aspects of the software product you would document in the SRS document and what would be the organization of your SRS document. Now we have learned all these things in, in length, but let us um, answer them in brief. These are the aspects that you are going to mention. First is your introduction, then functional requirements, non-functional requirements, and if possible, you can also uh, embed the constraints part. Second is using suitable example, explain the different type of requirement problem that should be identified and resolved during the requirement analysis activity. Now, once uh, you are gathering the requirements, there may be some problems or you know uh, some concern. And first, it has to be identified, and then it to be it needs to be resolved. So the answer would be the important types of requirement problems that that uh, should be identified and resolved uh, under requirement analysis activity. First is the ambiguity, incompleteness, and inconsistency. Ambiguity means the sentences or the content which should be there in requirements. They are such that the design part and the coding part or the testing phase you can relate with the SRS. That means this should be very very clear not ambiguous. Incompleteness means there are certain implicit things that the user would not say and you will also you will also not think about that or you will oversight them and this is not the good idea. Inconsistency means the SRS, the requirement should be consistent to one another. Means you cannot have uh, the requirements which are not saying the other requirement which is saying other other stuff so it should be consistent and once the once a user is reading the that srs he should feel comfortable in reading and should be uh, able to extract the consistent stuff from what you have written third is list five desirable characteristics of good software requirement specification document srs so it should be concise well structured and black box view you are not going to present uh, how it is going to be done means you are only going to present what user needs you are not going to say how it will be implemented. Then conceptual integrity means the integrity or the constraints that you are put in so be con conceptual only. Then response to undesired events. This may happen that sometimes something hap something may happen which which is beyond your control or which you should um, you should really write in SRS. Which on, on the basis of those some events that may occur may be handled. Verifiable. This is the most important. Verifiable means if you want the system to run, run or, or to, to succeed or the project to uh, you know be, be away from failure what important thing is the verification means if SRS is something that you have written something like that okay um, you know sun rises in the east uh, you know it is very verifiable but the, the line which I'm saying that if in the same line you write in, in your SRS like uh, say that um, the, the uh, GUI should be good Okay, now this is a very good sentence, but what about verification? What parameters, what are the, the verify, verifying things that you are going to, or parameters that you are going to see to, to formulate and to ascertain that your, your GUI is good. So GUI is good is not a good thing to write. I'm just saying that all sentences should be verifiable. We're coming to the fourth question. Suppose the analyst of a large product development effort has prepared the SRS document in the form of narrative essay on the system. To develop. So he has written in, in, in the form of an, an array, uh, essay, sorry. Now based on this requirement, the product development activity gets underway. Now, on the basis of the essay, things are going on. Just explain the problems that such a requirement specification document may create during development. So, how an uh, SRS in the form of an essay would uh, would uh, lead you in trouble? So, first is the problems that you are going to encounter is very difficult to modify any requirement later if it is in the form of an essay. Simple changes would require modification at several places. Then, essay will have ambiguity, imprecision, incompleteness, and contradiction, of course. Because in essay, what happens when you write introduction, something you write in introduction will be repeated in your main in the content and then in the conclusion. So, what happens is there will be these four or these five things which will be present there. That is why it is all highly encouraged that you present SRS in the form of points which are verifiable, con concise, content-wise, um, you know, non-ambiguous and uh, also very much clear to the person who is going to uh, make design out of it. 
then it would be very difficult to trace the requirement. Traceability is very important. So the most important thing is verifiability and traceability because once you present or write design code and test documents, how you are going to verify them? The main bible of your uh, all the software activities which, are, which will be commencing after preparation of requirements specification. So the bible is, bible is your requirement specification. So you have to write it in a way which should be verifiable. So you will never go for an narrative essay. Fifth is, the question fifth is, uh, discuss the relative advantage of formal and informal requirement specification. What is this? Formal specification and informal specification. Formal specification encourage rigor. Means you want to write everything in the form of mathematics, some formal methods like you used uh, some calculus, expression, etc. Formal specification can not only uh, are not only more precise because they are uh, you know you are using mathematical things to and that that is always uh, to be proved. You can easily prove it. But also mathematically sound. You are using mathematics and expressions and can be used logics and can be used to, uh, to reason about the properties of the specification, of course. Also, formal methods have well-defined semantics because you are using expression. Though those are, you know, well, well organized, managed, well proved. So, ambiguity in specification is automatically avoided. It will not be there. While formally, you know, in the, in the formal specification, you, will have, you may have all these. The mathematical basis of this formal specification, it will help you to automate the analysis of a specification because you can, you can mathematically, if you, it is mathematically, it can be directly converted into design and uh, other stuff. Well, these uh, informal specification, what, what advantage it have? Because it is not mathematically presented. It is presented in simple English in the, what, in the um, way the customer has provided or given his uh, ideas. It is presented like this. So it is easy to understand by the, by you, you and as, as well, and also the customers for whom you are making the software. Question 6 is why is the SRS document also known as the black box specification of the system? Black box specification means you are not going to show how you are going to make it, but you give you describe what are you going to make. So SRS document describes externally visible behavior of the system without just referring to the internal of the system. So you are going, you are giving um, function requirements, you are giving non-function requirements, you are providing the constraints and also traceability metrics. What are the different uh, category of users of the SRS document and what are their expectations from the SRS document? So you hear a uh, question is being asked with reference to the users which are going to use SRS document. There are various users, you know, and we call them as stakeholders also, right? User, customer and marketing person, then software developers, test engineers, user documentation writers, project managers and maintenance engineers. These all actually just I said that SRS is the Bible of what you're going to make. So you will follow that. So everyone, whether he is a user or a marketing person or a developer or a testing person or a documenter writer or a manager or a maintenance person, he is going to look for SRS only. Okay. I hope uh, you can just read it out because this is the idea I have given already. Eighth is what do you understand by traceability of requirements and why is traceability important? Traceability is one of the most important aspect of your requirements. And this is the most often uh, you know, asked question in the interviews, what is traceability metrics? So traceability means that it would be possible to tell which design component correspond to which requirement. Design should correspond to some requirement and that is given, that should be given in the SRS. Which code you're writing is uh, corresponding to which design component and which test, test case correspond to which requirement. So code, design and test in each and every phase, whatever you're doing, it should correspond to the SRS inputs and you know if you are given a code component that can be traced by corresponding design document and design component can be uh, the in the turn can be traced to a specific requirement it implements and vice versa so this traceability analysis is very important and is will be used quite frequently in your development process just for instance just just understand that uh, just by doing this traceability analysis we can even tell whether all these requirements have been duly taken into account in all phases. It can also be used to assess the impact of requirement change. So, uh, in the maintenance part, part also, you can have, you can be, uh, you, you may be using this uh, SRS. Traceability makes it easier to identify the part of the design and code that will be affected and many any requirement changes. So, it can also be used to study the impact of any problem, any any bug or any you know improper things of on various requirements. Let us see some true and false. This is the ninth question. So give reason for your answer. A is application developed under 4JL, fourth generation language. It would normally be more efficient and faster compared to application developed using 3JL. You know, you'll be tempted to answer it as yes or true, but it is false. Why? 4JL implementation, it may lead to very general solution where common abstractions across all similar applications have been parameterized, which is going to make it inefficient. 
B is a formal specification cannot be ambiguous. This is quite true. We have discussed it already because you have some mathematics uh, here. So, you know, well defined semantics are there. So when everything is well defined in the in the terms of logics and mathematical expressions, you'll not have any ambiguity for sure. Then C is a formal specification cannot be incomplete. Then this is false because it is possible for formal specification which, which can be incomplete. D is a formal specification cannot be inconsistent. Again, false. Why? Because, you know, formal specification can give you a good idea. It can have mathematical specification, but it may have formal, it may be possible that formal specification is inconsistent. Uh, why inconsistent? The inconsistent can be automatically detected. You can easily detect it. But there may, if you are if you're not well versed with formal specification, then you can uh, uh, specify or a, or a person who is uh, making this formal specification, he can commit mistake. He can make mistakes. Now, E is the system test plan can be prepared immediately after the completion of the requirement specifications uh, phase and this is true because the system test plan uh, what I'm, we, we are saying is after requirement specification phase can test plan be generated yes the system test plan can be designed on the base of what you, your SRS will contain functional and non-functional specifications so you have already functional and non-functional non specification of your system in the form of SRS so you can just make these test plans now okay Tenth is, what are the primary differences between model-oriented specification method and a property-oriented specification method? The specification of a system can be either as a list of desirable properties, which is your property-oriented, or a track model, which is model-oriented approach. Now, B is, compare the relative advantages of property-oriented specification methods over model-oriented specification methods. Let us see the advantage. This property, as we say, that, you know, we have a list of desirable property. So, property-oriented approaches specify a system by just conjunction of axioms, making it easier to alter augment and specification at a later stage. On the other hand, these model-oriented methods do not support logical conjunctions and disjunctions, which is, which is there in property-oriented approaches. And thus, even you, if you make minor changes to a specification, that will lead to complete overhauling and change and modification to the entire specification. C is name at least one representative uh, popular property-oriented specification technique and one representative model-oriented specification technique. So what is yes, this model-oriented specification? We have axiomatic and algebraic specification style, while in this model-oriented specification, we can have FSM and Petronius. Okay, consider the following requirement for a software to be developed uh, for controlling a chemical plant. Now, we are making a software for controlling a chemical plant. This chemical plant has a number of emergency conditions. So, many of the, there are certain emergency conditions. So, once this emergency condition occurs, some specified or pre-specified action needs to be taken. The different emergency conditions and corresponding actions that need to be taken are given like this. Okay, so, so if the temperature of the chemical plant exceeds this degree, then the water power should be turned on and the heater should be turned off. If the temperature of the chemical tank falls below this degree, then the heater should be turned on and the water should be turned off. And if the pressure of the chemical plant is above V1, then the wall V1 should be open. And if the chemical con uh, concentration of uh, the tank rises above M and the temperature of the tank is more than T3 degree, then the water shower should be turned on. Then we have E, if the pressure rises from above some T3 and the temperature rises above T1, then that water shower should be turned on and wall V1 and V2 are open and the alarm bell sounded. You need to write the requirements of this chemical plant software in the form of decision table. Now, I, uh, I this you can just you know that how decision table are been made. Okay, we have some some uh, actions actions here, and in this various properties and actions basis of this, I I hope that uh, I will leave this uh, you know various question I am going to leave you as an exercise because you can easily try it out, and uh, if uh, if any problem is there, you can just comment me. Uh, likewise, we have this question 12 because we, again we have to draw a decision tree and decision table and decision table. So I'll just leave it as an exercise for you. Again, some some uh, you have to write some pre and post condition of a function that is all these. And I again leave this is as an exercise for you. So you have to write algebraic expression method for this. You have to write algebraic expression for. I hope that because I've already covered this in the uh, discussion session, so you will be able to complete it. Uh, let us go to question number 18. So, what do you mean by executable specification language? Name commercially available execution specification language. This is execution specification language. Well, let us answer this. We already covered this. So, if the specification of the system is expressed formally by using some programming language, then it becomes possible to directly execute the specification. So, is it is it desirable? Yes, sometimes it will be required. And you have some commercially available executable specification languages, which are SQL, YACC, and Lex. 19 is what is fourth generation programming language 4GL and what are its advantages and disadvantages against your third generation 
technique so let's see it using a for gel only the what parts have to be specified what for gels they are example of executable specification language as we just uh, saw in the earlier question these for gels they are successful they are uh, why because they they have a lot of commonality between data processing applications for gels they actually rely on software reviews where the com com common abstractions has been identified and parameterized so the main idea is to reuse software and uh, there are various careful experiments which which have shown that rewriting these for gel for gel programs in higher languages results in up to 50% lower memory usage and also the program execution is uh, the time is reduced to tenfold so time um, you know you will get benefit in time and memory and which is what is required that is why for gels are so much used and wide what are the auxiliary functions in algebraic specification why are these needed so these auxiliary functions they are extra functions they are not part of function uh, interface functionality of the system and uh, they, they are introduced to define the meaning of some interface procedure so you'll have some library modules or those functions which are extra functions we call them as auxiliary functions which you are not going to make but you're going to use it 21 is what do you understand by incremental development of algebraic uh, specification and what is the advantage of incremental development of algebraic specifications let, let us answer this the idea behind this incremental specification is first uh, is to first develop the specification of simple types and then specify more complex types by using these specification which are simple types so we make simple types expression uh, or specification and then we combine them or we, when we and then we enhance them to make more uh, complex types so this is again a part 22 algebraic specify algebraic specify abstract data types that stores a set of elements and supports the following operations these are the operations now using these specifications you have to write this ADT abstract data type uh, sets so i hope that you're going to do it by yourself algebraic spec ex, uh, specification algebraic sp specification and then 25th is i'm just leaving it uh, for your exercise any problem just comment me i'm going to ask this 25th define finite termination and the unique termination properties of algebraic specification what is finite termination and unique termination and why is uh, it necessary for an algebraic specification to specify these properties so first is unique termination property what it, it says it indicates whether application of rewrite rules of, of different orders always result in the same answer rewriting rules in different orders always result in same or answer this is unique termination property while this finite termination property what it does it essentially addresses the this question what is the question do application of the rewrite rule to arbitrary expression any expression involving the interface produces procedures always terminate that is why we call it as a finite termination termination property so these properties are important to be uh, able to get meaningful results for the application of the property so this was the requirement specification part and the question i have left i i hope and uh, i'm sure that you'll be trying it and you'll be answering it answering it uh, to to your best of the knowledge thank you so much take care